Here we're going to do the same thing we did before, but we're going to also justify using the properties of equality here, but it's still relatively easy. So we have negative 5x plus 10 equals 50. I'm going to get rid of this guy first by subtracting 10 from both sides. When I do that, I get negative 5x equals 40. And then I'm going to divide by the coefficient of negative 5, and I'm left with x equals negative 8. Okay, so justify each step. Well, the first thing I did was subtract, so I'm going to do the subtraction property of equality. The second thing I did was I divided by negative 5, so it's going to be the division property of equality. And yes, it's that easy. Next question, I need, to, I need to get rid of this minus 9 first, so I'm going to add 9 to both sides. That way this goes away, and I'm left with the 1 third x equals 12. And then I'm going to multiply by the reciprocal, which is just 3. And then that way I'm left with x equals 12 times 3, which is 36. And since the first thing I did was add 9, I'm going to write uh, the addition property of equality. And since the second thing I did was multiply, I'm going to write multiplication property of equality. I need to get rid of this guy first, so I'm going to subtract 25 from both sides. If I do that, I get negative 3m equals 15. Then I'm going to divide by negative 3. And when I do that, I get m equals negative 5. And so let's justify each step. Well, the first thing I did was subtract 25, so it's going to be the subtraction property of equality. And since the second thing I did was divide by negative 3, it's going to be the division property of equality. For the next question, I need to get rid of this guy first, so I'm going to add 3 to both sides since it's the opposite of subtracting 3. When I do that, I get 9 equals negative x over 5. So I'm going to multiply by the reciprocal, which is just 5, but I'm going to do it with negative 5 because that way we'll get rid of the negative sign too. And I'm left with negative 45 equals x. And let's justify each step. I added 3 first, so it's the addition property of equality. And then I multiply by negative 5, so it's the multiplication property of equality. Question number 6. Uh, Jessica wants to buy four new tires for her truck. She has a budget of $500. And she knows that there's a flat installation fee of $60. So no matter what, she has to pay $60. And she has to buy four tires. So to figure out how much one tire could cost, Jessica, you use the equation shown where T is the cost for each tire. So you're going to solve for T using that equation. So let's go ahead and I think it's more useful to, to do that first. So I'm going to find some space wherever I can. So 500 equals 60 plus 4t. So what I'm going to do is subtract 60 from both sides. I end up with 440 equals 4t. Divide by 4. And so what we get is each tire is $110. They want us to select two of the following steps and reasons that can be used to solve this equation. So presumably two of these are right, two of these are wrong. So let's take a look. Step one is to subtract 60 from both sides of the equation to determine how much money is left for the four tires. Okay, so um, that's the first thing that we did actually. We subtracted 60, so I actually like that one. Uh, step so the next one, step one is to divide both sides of the equation by four to determine the cost of each of the four tires before paying for the installation fee. Um, you could do that, but uh, probably not the best step. So let's take a look at the other ones. The next, uh, the next following step is step two is to divide both sides of the equation by four to determine the cost of each tire. So let's take a look at the last one. Step two is to add. 60 on both sides of the equation because Jessica will need to spend $60 in addition. Yeah, that's just plain wrong because you're not adding 60. So this seems like it's the best choice there. 